Hi, would you like to learn some useful math words in English? Welcome to Jen's Jugyo. My name is Jen and today you're going to learn 18 different vocabulary words connected to math. The first expression I want to take a look at is this symbol here. This is the equal sign. When we use this sign in English, it will come before the answer to a math problem. For example, one plus one equals two. So it's the equal sign, but when we use it in a sentence, we will put an S on the end of it. One plus one is two. One plus one equals two. Some people might also say one plus one totals two or one plus one comes to two. The next two symbols I want to take a look at are the symbols that look like this and like this, like Pac-Man eating a number. What these symbols mean is greater than and less than. Whichever way the mouth looks like it's opening will always be towards the bigger number. So if you see something like two and then a big mouth like this and then one, you would read this as two is greater than one. If you reverse the symbol so it's in the opposite direction, then it would show that one is less than two. Our next expression for today is taking a look at even numbers and odd numbers. An even number is a number that is able to be divided equally by two. So a number such as two, four, six, eight, ten. Any number that ends in a two, four, six, eight, or zero is considered an even number in English. The opposite of an even number is an odd number. In this case, odd doesn't mean it's strange and weird odd. It means a number that can't be divided evenly by two. So they are numbers such as one, three, five, seven, and nine. Any number that ends in a one, three, five, seven, or nine is considered an odd number. So we have even numbers and odd numbers. Our fourth thing for today is the symbol that looks like a cross, like this. It is the plus sign. We use this sign to do addition. Addition means to add two numbers together, or more than two numbers. So to put numbers together and see what the total will be. For example, before you could hear me say that one plus one equals two. So that plus sign is how we can do addition. The opposite of the plus sign is the minus sign. We use this symbol for subtraction. To subtract a number means to take away a certain number. So we could say three minus one equals two, or three subtracted by one equals two. The next symbol I want to show you is the X sign. The X sign is used for multiplication. Multiply is the verb that we will use for this, but usually when we are speaking about it in regular English, we will say times. Two times two is four, rather than saying two multiplied by two is four. Both are acceptable, but times is how people usually will talk about this symbol when we use it as a verb. So three times three is nine. This is an example of multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. We use the verb to divide one number by another number. So we will use the preposition by. For example, nine divided by three is three. The next expression is percent. I want you to give me 
When we use it this way, to give 110%, it means to do your very best. Percent is a number out of 100. You can't have higher than 100%. The percent sign is one of my favorite signs in English because I usually see it when I go shopping. <gasps> it's a 75% off sale! That's great news! That means that if the item cost $100 but it's 75% off, I only have to pay $25 for that item. So the percent sign is a happy sign. When you write a test in English, Oftentimes, your teacher might put your grade at the top in a percentage. So we can use this symbol to say percent or percentage. If you got 80% on a test, that would be the same as getting 80 out of 100. If you put the numbers on top of each other like this, this is called a fraction. So with a fraction, there is a smaller number at the top of the line and a larger number at the bottom of a line. We use fractions to talk about how many parts of a whole item there are. For example, if I have a pizza, maybe I want to eat the whole pizza, but it's not good for my health. Maybe I will cut the pizza in half, into two even pieces. So if I eat half of the pizza, that would be like eating one over two, because I'm eating one of the two pieces of pizza. So the number at the bottom, we use half, and then third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. If the number above the line is more than one, for example, if I ate two fourths or two quarters of the pizza, the number at the bottom needs to have an S on it. So for example, one fifth or two fifths. If I have the fraction one over 10, this is one tenth. I could also represent this fraction using our next expression, which is a decimal. So this little dot that we use, which looks like a period, when we're using it to talk about numbers, it is a decimal point. And it helps to represent a number that is smaller than one. So in the example of one-tenth as a fraction, we could say that it is 0 0.1. So we will read the decimal as point when we are speaking or describing the number. You can see this concept with money in Canada. When we read prices with decimals in them in Canada, we don't read it as point, we just use the decimal point to separate dollars from cents. There are 100 cents in a dollar. So if I have 25 cents, if I wrote that down, it would be 0 0.25 because it's not a complete dollar. If I have $1.25 is how I will read the number if it is a price. If it's not a price, I would just say the answer is 1.25. Our next expression is really important if you don't like to do math like me. This is the most valuable thing I ever had in my math class in school. It is a calculator. It will calculate the answer for me. It will tell me what the math problem equals without me doing math in my head. Calculator, because it calculates the answer. Another really important item for math class is a ruler. Rulers will help you to measure straight lines. The next item that you might have to use in math class looks like this. It's a round kind of ruler. This is actually called a protractor in English. A protractor is used to help you measure angles. An angle is when you have the distance between these two lines here. So the two lines are touching in the corner and we want to know what the angle is. If the angle is a perfect square like this, we will say that it is a right angle. Angles are measured in degrees. A perfect right angle is a 90 degree angle. 
If the angle is smaller than 90 degrees, it's called an acute angle. It's small, it's cute, it's a acute angle. If the angle is bigger than 90 degrees, we call it an obtuse angle, obtuse. So those are the different types of angles you might encounter in math class as you're measuring them with your protractor. The next tool that you might have to use in math class looks like this. This is called a compass in English. I like to use my compass for drawing lots of pretty circles on my notes. The actual reason I had to use the compass in school was to measure circles. We would use a compass to help measure the diameter of a circle. A diameter means when you have a circle and you draw a straight line down the center of it, how long is the line? What is the distance or length of the line that touches each part of the circle? And it's touching each part of the circle on what we call the circle's circumference. Circumference is a word that we use just for circles, circumference, circle. And it's used to refer to the parameter of the circle. If this is my circle flat on the paper, if I want to measure the complete distance around this circle, around the outside of the circle, I would be measuring the parameter. If I want to measure the distance between this point to this point, the distance in a straight line like this, that is called the diameter. So the circumference and the diameter. A very common English expression that you might hear connected to circles is pie. And I don't mean the delicious type of pie you can eat for dessert. I mean pie with this symbol here. It represents the number 3.14 and many other decimals after that. So 3.14 is Pi. This number, pi, 3.14, is the circumference of the circle divided by the diameter. When you take the circumference of a circle and divide it by the diameter, the answer will always be pi. Now I really want to eat some pie. So today, you learned more than 18 different words connected to math. And now it's time for question of the day. Today's question is, do you like math? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. Before you go, I want to teach you one of my favorite things about calculators. If you push 0 0.7734 on a calculator and then you turn the calculator upside down, it will spell the word hello. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. If you found it useful, please subscribe to Jen's Jugio and give this video a thumbs up. Good luck with your English studies and your math studies, and I'll see you in the next lesson.